Welcome to the Snow Mirror synchronization setup. In this video, we will be setting up a custom synchronization with all the advanced options explained, as well as setting multiple synchronizations at once. We have already installed and configured Snow Mirror. In case you missed that, you can go back to a previous tutorial video. Let's configure a basic synchronization first, and then move on to more advanced ones. Naturally, we need to log in first using the credentials we previously created. The first thing we see after logging in is the dashboard, which is currently empty, as we didn't set up any synchronizations yet. Let's fix this by moving to the synchronization tab and setting up a new synchronization. In the first step, we need to select a table to synchronize. Let's pick the task table for example and click next. The most important thing here is choosing the columns to synchronize. We leave other options intact, as they will be explained later in this video. Say we need number, show description and priority for our reporting, so we just double click them in the left list and they are moved to the right, which is the list of synchronized columns. We can always count the number of records to be downloaded. There is a low number of records now, as this is just a development instance. Table every hour starting at midnight, so we choose the interval periodically, set the time to midnight and set the interval to 60 minutes. Now click finish. As we can see, the synchronization has been created with the next round scheduled at 5 pm. We can also run the synchronization manually by selecting it and pressing the synchronize button. That way, all the 139 records are replicated to our local database right now. We will now move on to a more advanced synchronization with all the options explained. We choose the incident table to synchronize and move on by clicking next. The first field here only configures the name of the synchronization. The next read-only field is the name of the table in ServiceNow. Third field allows us to modify the table name in our local database. This can be useful for example when you want to have high priority incidents in one table and low priority ones in another. The next read-only field is the name of the table in ServiceNow. Third field allows us to modify the table name in our local database. This can be useful for example when you want to have high priority incidents in one table and low priority ones in another. This can be useful for example when you want to have high priority incidents in one table and low priority ones in another. ServiceNow encoded query field is where things start to get interesting. This allows us to filter out the records which are going to be downloaded. To demonstrate this, we first count the records and see 50 incidents. To get the encoded query, we move to ServiceNow and open up all incidents. There are indeed 50 records, which matches the snow mirror count. We now set a filter, for example, priority critical and only active incidents. If we are satisfied with the filter, we notice there are 11 filter records and then copy the encoded query by right-clicking the filter and selecting copy query. We move back to the snow mirror and paste the filter there. We now count the records and see that the count matches the one in service now. The delete strategy is also interesting as it defines how to search for deleted records. Default and recommended approach is audit, which just looks to the sys audit delete table in service now. Audit is the fastest, however only works for audited tables. Truncate option deletes all the data in the local database and then downloads them again. This happens with every sync. Difference delete strategy. Include inherited columns checkbox is pretty self-explanatory. In ServiceNow, tables can have inheritance. For example, the incident table is a child of a task table. That way, incident has both its own columns as well as the inherited ones from task table. If we uncheck this checkbox, we can synchronize only incidents own columns, but if we check it, we can get even the inherited ones to synchronize. This allows us to flatten the table hierarchy. Auto scheme update is useful when we want to have the local column set always matching the service now one. If we enable this, we can notice all the existing columns are selected to synchronize. 
But more importantly, when a column is added to ServiceNow, it is also automatically added to the synchronization in SnowMirror. The last option here defines how to deal with reference fields. We can select to download only the foreign sys IDs, display values of the reference records, or both of them. In this case, display values will be saved in columns prefixed with dv underscore. We choose both and click Next. And the last step is to configure the scheduler. Cron option lets us use the cron expression and manual turns off the scheduler and runs the synchronization only on demand. Cron option lets us use a cron expression and manual turns off the scheduler and runs synchronization only on demand. We choose daily at 3 am and enable advanced settings which allows us to configure a full load scheduler which performs clean and synchronize. We set the full load scheduler to run every Sunday at 3 am. This way we will be automatically downloading incremental changes every day via full load every week. We click the finish button and once again the synchronization is created. One more thing we want to show you in this tutorial is setting up a synchronization of multiple tables at once. We click New Synchronization and then Bulk Create. We choose for example the problem, change request, service request and item and user tables. As we move on to the next page, we can notice that the setup is common for all of the tables and therefore has less options available. With this in mind, we select the auto scheme update and click next. We set the scheduler to 4 o'clock in the morning and click finish. SnowMirror is now creating the synchronizations for us, so we don't have to set up each one manually. They are created without any errors or warnings, so we close the window and may now order our synchronizations to run. As we can see, only three synchronizations are running at once and as soon as one of them finishes, another one starts synchronizing. We wait a couple of seconds and now have all the selected tables downloaded in our database, available for reporting. In this video, we explained advanced options of synchronization in SnowMirror. There are more tutorial videos available for your convenience. Thank you for watching.